Hey guys, so welcome back. Uh, it's Brad here and I've got a corrections perspective and update video for the Harley Benton single cut 550 version 2. And this is, um, I've been playing it for this week. I got it, I got it a week ago. I've been playing it acoustically. Uh, <laughs> because it sounds like this. Grounding issue. So just take your hands off. All right, so there are some grounding issues. And for some of you, no big deal. You, you're just like, I'll just open this up, make some quick adjustments and we're off to go. Or some of you guys are like, I was gonna tear up the components anyway, upgrade it or whatever. Um, others that are like me, probably my, I fall in this camp, like, well, we'll see what we can do. I mean, I, I have a soldering iron and um, I have a little bit of experience just from putting to, um, together a couple parts casters <laughs> and uh, making some, some fixes along the way, but I'm not very comfortable with it. I'm not, not very good. And so I'm going to open it up and I'm going to see what we can do. Um, and if I can't figure it out and it's still a problem, then maybe um, I'll take um, Toman's offer and exchanging it. Because they, they did, I did reach out to them and their customer service is pretty good. And so uh, I, I'm going to include a little bit more about that in the video later. But um, just my experience reaching out to them and letting them know the problem. So that's cool. Now, if you're in the other camp... So we've talked about people that are like, no problem. People that are like me, like, eh, we'll see what we can do. And then there's people that you don't own a soldering iron. You don't, you don't have any way of doing it or like, or you've never, you just don't feel comfortable working with stuff like that. And I think that's totally fine. Um, I would like to encourage people to learn how to fix their guitars and stuff. I think that's an important skill, especially if you own, you know, more than one <laughs> or two, like, you know, you're going to have to learn to maintain them yourself to, at uh, at least at a certain level, or you're gonna to have to shell out a lot of money over the years to have them maintained. So, um, but if you fall in that camp where you, you haven't uh, fixed things before and you don't want to, um, which is totally reasonable, especially if you're buying, I think especially if you're buying um, like your first guitar, you don't wanna to have to fix it right out the bat. That's just, that's just not good. So then, yeah, I would just return it. I'd just take them up on their on their on Toman's offer and 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 do that. But I just would rather not send it back. I just would rather like I know it's not perfect, but I always like guitars that are kind of not perfect. I don't know. I just kind of relate to them a little bit more. <laughs> so um, I kind of like them with their own quirkiness and stuff. And like I said, the frets on here. Actually, I'm gonna do a more review. Let's let's hold off on that. Let's see if we can. If we can get this thing fixed all right but I do want to make some corrections so actually let's start off like with some of the corrections first all right so after playing it for a week um, I have determined that I think the frets are actually better than I I first thought when I first got it um, the the frets my reaction if you guys remember from the unboxing video was like ooh, I think these are sharper they were I was that is my honest first reaction. They aren't sharp, and I, I did say that. I, I corrected myself like maybe like two seconds after I said they were sharp. So they're not sharp, but I can feel them. And I think that I was had an unrealistic expectation when I first unboxed it uh, for like them being like totally perfectly dressed that I was like, you couldn't feel them at all. And, you know, to hold like this, like, guitar <laughs> you know like up against like my other you know 10 guitars that I have it's just it's that wasn't a fair comparison and I think the reason why I held that view was or had that experience rather it was because people kept you know on the reviews and say oh they're perfect and they're perfect and everything else and let me just say I think they are very good very good and I want to offer a little per perspective okay so this is, I kind of, I'm trying to show like what they look like as best as I can, you know, 
these are jumbo and I think that the fact just the size of them has um, contributed a little bit to like how much I feel them how much you notice them uh, most of my other guitars um, after playing this week um, you know they're vintage style I mean some of them are vintage <laughs> but some of them they have that vintage style and they're like the regular nickel or silver or whatever metal they use for the fret wire and they're they're smaller and and I have you know even on some of those I've I've dressed the ends on them to make them really smooth so um, the fact that these are jumbo I think makes a difference I think I, I have jumbo on one of my other guitars and I don't feel it as much as this but I think that the fact that they're, they're jumbo frets contributes a little bit to that that feeling so if you so I guess just keep that in perspective like if you're used to jumbo frets maybe these aren't that big of a difference if you're used to just playing like vintage style like smaller frets uh, then you probably will notice it and so there's just something to kind of keep in in mind uh, it's not that it's good or bad I actually really like it I've been playing it for a week and it, it feels more comfortable now after like I've gotten used to it and so it's starting to feel feel right it feels good I might still go back in and like try to kind of dress like a few of these if I can um, you know apparently I, I think you can work the stainless steel it just takes a little bit more work and maybe it's gonna um, eat your tools down a little bit faster but I think overall it's pretty good I'm not gonna complain about it so there's that that's I guess it's a correction but it's mostly just perspective because I don't take back like my first response to it because that was my honest response I was like ooh, these are sharper than I thought but they're not that bad so if you just just keep that in mind all right um, as far as I didn't the nut you know I wasn't wrong on the nut the nut still it's too a little bit too small for this I have looked at replacement nuts oh the one thing I was wrong about so here's a correction I said they're graph tech nuts um, in the first video or at least I thought they were they are not they are graphite just regular graphite nuts um, so they're probably like they're probably like or very similar to graph tech but they're not they're not graph tech brand nuts so that's a correction I need to make um, okay so I did look at the nuts and I found the ones that would be the replacement for it and I think they're like they're under 15 bucks so like 13 14 dollars and um, I thought about replacing it and getting a black one so it wouldn't be this like stark white pure white against all this yellow you can kind of see that right like there's yellowish kind of creamy white and then there's like pure white right here I'm not gonna do it I probably I mean if, if it didn't if it played if the net if the nut wasn't right I would totally change it and do it the way I wanted it but it plays fine so I'm, I'm just gonna leave it it's just, it just adds to its like quirkiness you know like this is that guitar and so I'd, I'd like to make another video at some point about like my modding philosophy on guitars and I'll probably do that you know sometime with the next few months but I'm gonna probably leave that as it is until it fails or I, I just I'll probably just leave that how it is if it, if it ends up really bothering me in the future maybe I'll, I'll put that and I think just so you know just information only I think the graph tech nuts would fit better because they, they fit this same size this dimension but they I think they're cut just a little bit longer so you can file them down you can sand them down so they'll fit absolutely perfect and that would be that would actually be an upgrade I think because it does you can feel it and not that you play up there I mean who plays up <laughs> but you know it, it's something that you you notice it's just like a kind of a quality control sort of thing and it would look better look more professional if you upgraded that but that's a total cosmetic thing and I'm not really that interested in that so um, I don't know if did I talk about the one thing I do want to talk about really quick though that I didn't talk about uh, 
is the, the neck shape itself. The neck shape is good. It feels really solid. I like it. It's a very like medium size C shape is what I would describe it as. It's, I think they described it as like a 60s C. Um, and so I don't, I think that's trying to kind of borrow maybe the vocabulary a little bit of the Gibson because um, they have like their Gibsons like 50s which are a little bit thicker and then their, their um, 60s are a little thinner. Um, I don't have those to compare to this. So, sorry, you're on your own there. But I do have a lot of other guitars that I can compare to and that maybe might offer some perspective on the, the size of the shape. So I'm about 6'1 or so, 200 200 pound guy. So I'm a large to, or medium to large sort of guy. And my hands are accordingly, they're proportional. <laughs> so um, I don't know, they, they, it fits, it fills up my hand. It feels pretty good. It's not overly large. Like I do have some necks that are a little thicker and I do have some that are thinner. So it fits like kind of right in the middle, um, which I think is really nice. I think this is gonna work for most people. Like, you're not going to get, if you're expecting, like, oh, I just want a really thick, you're not, this isn't it. And you're like, I just want a really thin, like, shredder style. That's not it either. So, this is, like, the average, which is what I want. That's exactly what I want. And so, I think the next shape is, is, I can't, there's no complaints at all. I think it's exactly what I wanted. I was a little nervous, because I heard some people say that they were, like, thin. And then I heard some people say they were thick, which is probably, <laughs> you know, confirms the, the fact that it's just like the right size, it's a medium size. So, um, yeah, people that are saying it's really thin, I can see where you're coming from if you're used to like a, like a, maybe a baseball bat sort of 50s guitar or something like that. Um, I have a couple of guitars that are thicker. Um, I have a GNL that's um, an older GNL, which is a little bit thicker. Um, the newer GNLs, I think, are there's there's modern C or whatever. It's it's thinner than than uh, than what I have. So the traditional like C shape is is good. I have a Jazzmaster, which is like a nice thick. It's a little bit more thick um, neck, which feels good. It feels that's that one actually feels really good. That's like one of my favorite. Uh, Next, and I have you know like actually my favorite guitar is um, my Tornado Fender Tornado and that's just like the standard C shape you know it's a 9.5 radius thing which doesn't really affect the, the feel of this you know but then I have this one and so just to offer some comparison this is a Fender like this is um, this is a parts caster thing that I put together and I'm gonna I'm saving this one for my kids actually because it's a really beautiful guitar. It works and it's, it's fabulous. It's it's really nice. But the neck on the uh, the Squires, the Affinity Squires anyway, are really thin. They're like the ones that I've experienced. And I think that's the, the downside for those. Um, but I have my Squire, I have a Squire J Mascus Jazz Master. And that is a really beautiful neck. You know, it's it's thicker. So not all squires have thin necks, um, but if you're familiar with like the affinities, those ones do have a thinner, thinner neck. And so, uh, if you're wondering why this this is actually a squire, I know you're like it's not. It is. It may or may not look like one, but it was. That's a different story. Someone actually, I bought this from someone that had modded. A squire and tried to make it look like a old fender <laughs> and it was a fail but they had a lot of really nice parts on it so I used it as a parts caster and that's the neck from it anyway that's a different story if you're interested in it let me know and I'll make it I'll let you do another stories about some of my parts casters all right but anyway back on to the, our, our topic here all right so I could talk about a lot of this stuff on this guitar. The weight, oh, someone else asked about the weight in the last one. This is um, about almost nine pounds. I, I'd say it depends on like where, how you put it on the scale or whatever. I get it about nine pounds or just under nine pounds. Um, I had a reading like at eight, 
8.7 or something like that. It was the lowest, then I had it at 9, was like the highest. I don't have a super reliable scale, but it's it's in that ballpark. And so, <laughs> I don't know. Um, so it's it's like about, it's the right weight, okay? And you just can feel it. And I think there's like the actual weight, and then you can also like have like the perceived weight on a guitar. And some guitars like feel heavier than they really are, and some of them feel lighter than they actually are too. And I think this one feels good. It It's about the right, what you'd expect for like a Les Paul type, you know, right about that nine pound mark. Um, just to put it in perspective, it is almost my heaviest guitar. My GNL ASAT Z3 is, is heavier than this. It's like nine pounds. And this is like, almost nine pounds but that one feels heavy it just it's a heavy guitar i love it it's a beautiful plays fine and i don't mind nine pounds doesn't kill me um but it is heavier and um i think so if you're worried about weight there's that's about what that one weighs yours will probably weigh different um you know i do have ones that are much lighter you know most of mine are around eight pounds but this one definitely feels heavier and as it should, it's a Les Paul type, so that's the weight. Also, um, yeah, everything else, I think it's great. I think it's a fantastic guitar. Um, let's open it up. Let's see if we can make some fixes. And um, if not, Toman has been really good. I told them the problems, and they're like, yeah, we can, you know. I sent them pictures of, like, the damaged box and stuff, and they're really cool. So they're working with me, and I... I'm probably not going to send it back, uh, but if I open it up and it looks like a mess and I can't solve it, then I, it's good to know that there is an option for that. So if you're on the fence about ordering from, from them, they seem great. They seem totally legit. So if you're in the States, there might be, like I've seen Les Paul types, I've seen some Epiphones and stuff that are on on the offer up and stuff that you can probably get like a really smoking deal on. Um, it just it kind of depends on what you really want. Is it? But I, I think this sounds good. I like this guitar. I think it. So, I, anyway, let's open up. Let's see where, where we go from it. Okay. So I opened this up. Actually, I've opened up everything. And I've looked through here, and it looks like all the connections. Like, I can't see any problem with any of the connections. Let's just put it that way. Um, but if anyone was interested in what inside looks like there's some shielding paint um, you know I'm a paint I'm a painter I'm an art instructor I've seen some better painting <laughs> before than that. but um, maybe it does the job I don't know uh, I'm not really an expert in grounding issues and shielding things but um, it's not 100% like covered in there. I don't know if that's doing it. Um, this, I, again, I looked in there and I can't see anything wrong. Like my hands are, I mean, you have to be pretty small. Like I don't even want to try to solder that. I mean, it's like really delicate. Like I, all the connections look fine. I guess I should just say they look fine in, I can't see any obvious problems. This would be like the one area that I'd feel comfortable soldering. <laughs> and it seems like it's all good. So I don't know where that where that leaves us, but I'm gonna guess I'm gonna go get the meter out and see if I can find any bad connections. Alright, wish me luck. Alright, so we got out the multimeter only to find out that it isn't working. So I can't test the continuity in this guitar. So either I need to get a new one, which I don't really want to do, <laughs> or send this back, which I don't really want to do. So I'm in a predicament right now. All right, so where does that leave me now? Uh, it leaves me with a difficult decision. Um, I either need to go buy a new multimeter and then test it and see if I can diagnose the problem and then see if I can then fix it um, with my very average or sub-average 
below average soldering skills, um, I may be able to do that. Or do I just kind of just say, I've, I've tried, I've had enough, <laughs> wash my hands of this, and send it back to Tillman and um, get a replacement one or whatever. So I haven't decided yet. But in the meantime, um, well, I will keep you in, in the loop on that. And I'll, and I'll let you know like how the return process goes if that's the, the route I, I choose. Um, and I just want to say one thing. The, the packing of this whole thing, because I'm sure Toman is like, because I've talked to them a little bit back and forth with the customer service. And, you know, I think that, you know, they're blaming, obviously, UPS or the delivery handlers in it. And the, I think they're, they're right in saying that. I mean, it did get banged up a lot. Um, there's a hole in the box and everything. And, you know, they want me to supply all these things and go through UPS and stuff to try to show, like, there's damage and stuff and then send the guitar back to Toman. And I really didn't want to do that. I just thought, I was, like, hoping that I could just fix it. But um, anyway, you know, so some of the, the fault probably does lie with UPS. The other fault, I think, is a little bit on Toman itself, on themselves, because... When when I un, when I unboxed the the guitar, if you see look back in the first video, all the packing was like on one side of it, and like none on the other. So it's like, like if you were to like, if they were to put like the the limited packing mis, like supplies that they actually had in there, like that kind of crunched up paper cardboardish stuff, you know, if it would have been surrounding the whole box, I think it would have survived the the shipment even with like the hole that came in there. Um, and the, I mean, you can judge for yourself. You can see the unboxing video. You can see what it looked like when it came out. Um, so I think there's a little bit of blame to, that can be shared um, uh, between the two. And then, you know, obviously me, like, I wish I could have had the skills and the, the tools and stuff to fix it myself so I didn't have to return it. So it's just kind of an unfortunate thing right now. It kind of bumps me out. But the good news is is that I have this guitar right here, which is my absolute favorite of all time guitar. And it's uh, my 22 year old Fender Tornado. And yes, this is the Fender. It's not the Squire version, but you know what? If I were in the market, the Squire, I would buy the Squire version of this. They, they've reissued these as Squires and I'm sure they're awesome because I have a Squire Jazzmaster, the J Mascus one, and it's a fabulous guitar. And so I assume that the Squires of these would be cool too, but this is great. These are not traditional Fender scale. These are the 23, or excuse me, 24 and three quarters scale, like the Gibson or like the Harley Benton single cut 552 version two. Um, so it's a similar scale. It's got humbuckers, all that good stuff. So on paper, it kind of looks and feels the same, but they do sound different. And, um, I think the the 550 is really clean and articulate, like when it's not humming <laughs> like uncontrollably. Um, I think that the sound of it is really is really nice. Those those Tesla pickups, I can confirm that they sound good. At least I I think so. They do sound different, and I, I mean, you can say what you want about these. They're maybe not the best pickups, but I've kind of grown accustomed to them, and I like them. They fit and suit me. The one thing that they do, because they have, see they have, they don't wiggle like the other ones. <laughs> That's kind of what I was saying with the other uh, Harley Benton, is that those pickups wiggle a lot. These don't wiggle. They're in there firm, nice. So, it, meanwhile, while I'm getting the other one figured out, this guy and I, we're gonna, we're gonna have some fun together, just like old times. All right. You guys have fun too. Let me know if you, your Harley Benton arrived in perfect condition or if you had to deal with any headaches or, or what and or whatnot. You guys have have a good day. Have fun playing, learning, practicing, making music, all the good stuff. And we'll catch you next time with another update on the Harley Benton saga. <laughs> That's what it's turning into. All right, take care, guys. Bye.